can each governor make the most of their time at meetings? What are the correct procedures to follow and how can newcomers prevent faux pas occurring? Two chairs, a new parent governor and the head of Devon's Governor Services give examples of what to look out for and some genuine advice on how to avoid falling into obvious pitfalls. They offer some basic tips for participants as well as more specific points for the chairs. And to give you a real insight into how easy it is to turn bad habits into good practice, actors have been used to reconstruct some typical scenarios. The first tip is... Make sure you're prepared. That means read the relevant papers before the meeting. But let's see what happens when you don't. So, let's move straight on with the agenda, shall we? Now, did everybody have a chance to look at the head teacher's report on the proposed computer I'm purchase. I'm really sorry I haven't been able to. I'm really sorry everybody but I haven't had a chance to look at anything so if anybody can give me a very brief outline on what, what it's about I'd be very very grateful. It's worth investing a little bit of time especially when you're new in thorough reading of the papers. Start with the agenda so you're clear about what the governing body is going to make decisions about and then make sure you've read the paperwork that backs up that agenda and certainly read the head teacher's report. Um, heads put a lot of time into their report and it is the most up-to-date monitoring report of where your school's at really. So I would certainly say, and I know I got a lot of benefit out of reading the head's report, highlighting things I didn't understand and highlighting other things where I wanted to ask a question at the meeting. And here's how it should be done. Right, has everybody had a chance to read the head teacher's report on the proposed computer purchases? Yes, but I just need a, a little bit of clarification on one point. Um, I know we did discuss it, but it was, you know, many moons ago. So if I could uh, find out what exactly are the terms of reference for the Finance Committee. They were minuted, though, those yes, details. Were. So if you could extract them and, and print them off, uh, then you can refer. In fact, if everybody has a copy, then uh, we can all refer to them. Yes? Okay. Next, a tip for all newcomers. You're becoming a member of a team and there's no room for personal hobby horses. So first, here's what not to do. Right, before we go any further, I'd like to introduce a new member of our team. This is uh, Roseanne Parks. Would you like to say a word? Just Thanks, to say hello. hello. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to be here. Just really want to get involved, basically. Um, I've got lots of ideas already. You know, I've been thinking about it before I came here. So lots of issues um, that I'd like to, you know, put forward or tackle. For example, the school dinners, that whole, that whole thing with Jamie Oliver really brought it to my attention as a parent. So yeah, there's quite a few issues that I'd like to tackle. At that first meeting, I think it's important not to jump in too quickly, really. Just don't be tempted to put your opinions forward straight away because you are learning uh, and it's a, it's a new game that you're learning and I feel that you'll, you'll, you'll go away from that first meeting feeling maybe a lot more confident and strengthened really for the next meeting if you, if you at least you've established your position as a novice first. Maybe she should have done it like this. Uh, oh, well, before we go any further, I'd like to introduce a new member of the governing body, Roseanne Parks, oh, whose um, daughter is in year three. And very welcome you are. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm a trained nutritionist, so I hope my skills will come in useful at some point. Mm, absolutely. And yeah, so it's just a case of getting to know all your names and getting my head around the paperwork, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we'll be kind to you, don't worry. <laughs> Our next tip may sound obvious, but it's often harder to apply than you think. Learn about protocol. Don't throw in unsolicited questions based on gossip, especially if they refer to members of staff. Well, while we're on the subject, I think I should mention that I had a verbal complaint from a pair, year two parent about her child's teacher, Mrs. Telford. Mrs. Telford? Oh, really? Well, that does surprise me. I thought she was actually... Well, you know she's actually quite new to the school, yeah. but um, has anybody else raised the, raised the issue? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, but she seemed very upset about it. Yes. We live in dread as chairs that you're going to get to uh, an hour and a half into the meeting and suddenly someone says, head, head teacher, I want to ask you about that teacher and I've had a parent come up to me who said this or that. And the meeting can be destabilised. Um, 
to a governor like that, I think my immediate request would be, well, have you just heard about it? And if the answer is no, to say, well, as nicely as possible. It would have been helpful if you would have talked to the head teacher before this evening uh, and myself as well so that we could have found out the other side of the story because with all of these issues there are at least two sides and often many more to a particular concern. Uh, on a, a pastoral note, um, Mr Jones spoke to me a couple of days ago about a complaint uh, from a parent about a teacher which was um, good of you to alert me but actually as the, as the parent hadn't spoken directly to the teacher um, it's not our place to get involved as governors, as you probably all know, and um, you know we don't get involved as governors unless there's a formal complaint from the um, parent to the head teacher. And uh, in this case, it was actually all sorted out. Um, Nigel did speak to Mrs. Telford, and uh, uh, apparently the child was rather upset at not playing Mary in the nativity. And she is giving her every opportunity to shine as the um, donkey. <laughs> Here are a few quick tips for making meetings more efficient and possibly more enjoyable. Make place names for every member of the board. It's helpful for new governors and for you too. One for chairs and clerks. Personalise your agenda with the logo of the school. It gives a feeling of identity and pride in the school. File as you go. Always take an A4 folder and hole punch with you. Meetings are always a time when loads of paperwork is handed out. Do it while you remember. Get a contact list of all school governors put in the front of your file. It also means that if you need to ask advice on something, you can ring up your mentor governor prior to the meeting itself. The next tip illustrates the importance of declaring an interest in the matter under discussion. Don't wait for someone else to point it out. Moving on to um, plans now to repair the swimming pool, we have received now, we've got three estimates from different builders. Um, Steph, um, could you just hand those to me? Um, you should actually have copies of them in your papers. They're ranging from uh, 5,000 to 7,000. Um, well, I, I'd like to suggest we should, we should go down the middle, the middle estimate, because um, I think it's Fishers, isn't it? Mm. Fishers, uh, they've got a really good reputation, you know, they're honest. The reliable, if all of this sort of work. Is that, is that a benefit? It managed your daughter last year, didn't he? Yeah, yeah but um, the thing is, I really know their work. You know, I know that they're very reliable, good value for money, and they'll get the job done. Another procedure which you need to be aware of is about the declaration of any interest you might have as a governor. That means if a member of your family, say, is interested in taking on a contract with the school for, for business, or you're related to a member of staff, or they might be discussing something to do with, say, a learning support assistant that might be attached to your child, if your child, say, for example, has got special needs. Then you would declare that interest because that means you couldn't make a decision in an unbiased way. So you would declare the interest, withdraw from the meeting, and then the, the minutes of the governing body would record that. When they've made that decision, whatever it was, then you would be invited to come back. So we have to make a decision now about uh, uh, which building sorry, we go for. Mary, sorry, I got to declare an interest to everybody. I have an, um, my daughter Jenny is married to Ben Fisher, who I think will find his number three oh. uh, of those estimates. So, um, by the way, I think he's an excellent chap, but I can't take part in um, the discussion. Yeah, all afraid. right. Well, thanks for um, doing that and declaring your interest. So, uh, if you'd care to leave the room, actually, while we um, make a decision on these three. Thank you, Richard. Another important tip. Do follow up work as soon as you can. Don't procrastinate or you'll end up letting your fellow governors down. George, you uh, offered to observe a visit with the SN groups to the forest camps. How did it go? Ah, yes. Um, well, I, I, I did get in touch with the director, um, or I, I tried to, and he wasn't available at the time, but I left a message for him to ring me back. And um, he, I haven't actually heard from him. And I'm afraid I, I haven't had a chance to... You mean you didn't go? Uh, no, no, I, but I, I will um, make George, contact... George, this was actually on the agenda, so you should have rung me and let me know about this. This is actually wasted time, and um, we're missing a vital part of this programme. Um, if the, a point hasn't been actioned and followed through, then obviously that person will have to explain to governors at the next meeting why, why it hasn't been done. There might be very good valid reasons why it hasn't been done. Perhaps somebody's been ill, perhaps somebody hasn't been able to find out the relevant information because people being away on holiday or whatever. But say, 
usually governors would expect a response because the meetings are only once a term. So you would expect somebody to find the relevant response to an action point but, uh, between those three meetings in a year. George, thank you for your excellent report on your visit with the SEN camp to the forest camps. It was um, a joy to read. Uh, uh, has everybody seen it? It's attached to the agenda. Um, you obviously have in full support of this um, programme and uh, no particular need to change any of their practices? No, I, th I thought they were excellent. Yeah. And especially for um, kids like this who lack confidence, yeah. it, it was challenging but not too challenging. Yeah. If you want your meetings to be effective, it's really important that school governors keep themselves as up to date as possible. Uh, now, I'm very aware uh, there are plenty of new websites coming up all the time with information that could actually benefit us all, but um, being a bit of a Luddite myself, I'm not um, terribly well up on it. Is there anyone who can help with non-starters like me? Uh, oh, yes, of course. It's really important you try to keep yourself up to date with information, and most of that is on websites nowadays. So don't be afraid to think about using websites. There is still, obviously, some information on paper, but look at your own school's website, look at your own local authority's website, and also the Department for Education and Skills website called GovernorNet. Yeah, and what I could do is, because um, we've got very fast um, access at work, so I can sort of download stuff from the National Grid for Learning and LSC and all that sort of thing. And then Some governing bodies are introducing a web governor, so they've got one governor who really keeps up to date on that website and says, this is worth you having, do you want me to print it off for you, or will you go on yourselves and look at it? So saying, you know, this is topical interest to the governors. And finally, a piece of advice for chairs in particular. Do try and start your meetings on time, and more importantly, end on time. Don't let individual governors take over, or it could ruin everyone's meeting. All over the country, we are suffering from the what to wear syndrome argument. You know, I remember it with my children. I remember it doing it to my parents because we didn't have school uniform then. You know, that, that, that argument often leads to children coming late to school. It's often an excuse for, for children. In that, he or she's in this age bracket. Let's get in touch with the school, see if we can find out who this child is. And parents put it on themselves. Making sure the meetings don't go on too long is very important. I'm watching the clock or watching my watch. I like to give every governor the opportunity to have their say and say their piece, but I'm not, I'm not frightened to step in and say, well, okay, I think we've covered that point enough for now. Leave it to the next meeting, discuss it next subcommittee meeting if it needs more points of clarification. But some governors have been known to ramble on for far too long, and there is a need to make sure the meetings are kept as concise as possible. Identified I think I'm going to have to cut in now because it's almost six o'clock and uh, there are other subjects on, on the agenda. But it, no, it is a very important point and I, I do take all your points. I think we all do. So let's recap. Be prepared. Get to know the team. Learn about protocol. Declare your interests. Do follow-up work. Keep up to date. Start and end on time. Well, I think we can draw that to a close. It was a very productive meeting. Thank you all very much, and uh, nice to see you all here. Yeah. Yeah.